BSNB Now is a Discord, so click the link in the description and join today. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Swooning Over Stands, a Grunkle, a, Hello, a Grunkle dating sub. Yay. I love Grunkle Stan. I was trying to push start game like I'm actually playing, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm playing it this time. Ah, good old road trips, full of promise and ripe with potential for adventure, soul searching, and incredible scenery. Or at least that's what you thought before the novelty wore thin. As of now, your legs are cramping up, you've exhausted your travel playlist two times over, and your stomach is begging for something to eat. On top of all that, you're pretty sure you're lost. Driving through Oregon paints a picture of trees, trees, and more trees, especially on the endless winding roads that you're taking up north. All that breaks the pattern is the sign that zips past with the words that you're just able to make out. Gravity falls. The road continues on. Giant redwoods looming on both sides. You find yourself anticipating something, because as you drive on, you can feel it. Something strange is bound to happen here. Something weird. And that's when it happens. Your car picks up speed. The change came out of nowhere, and you quickly put your foot on the brakes, but horrifyingly the car seems to be driving on its own willpower. Trying to stay calm despite the panic welling in your chest, you pull the emergency brake, only to find that the car resists and keeps moving forward, like something is pulling it in. The car begins to rattle. The wheels screech against the country road, and you're screaming until... CRASH! There's smoke. Why is there smoke? You cough, fumble for the door, and manage to undo the lock just before the door was wrenched outward from your grasp. Something lands on your shoulder. A hand. I'm assuming this is Grunkle Stan or, or Stanford. Look at the symbol. Okay, I'm assuming that's Stanford then. That's probably Ford. <laughs> you want to be Stanford? I was going to I was gonna do Grunkle Stan. Uh, um, are you I can do right? both if you'd like. <laughs> that's my Stanford voice. Are you Are all you right? All right? <laughs> I can't do a Stanford <laughs> voice. Remember, he's the guy who voices Omni-Man. You could probably Think, do. Mark. Think. See, you can do it so much better than I can. Are you all right? A man stands at your open car door. His hand on your shoulder leaves you to tilt your head up, and he pulls a flashlight from his coat, shining it in your eyes. Two blinks, and he lets your chin go. Oh, is he trying to kiss me? His eyes dart over to the rest of you, looking for injuries. Still stunned, all you do is watch. What's your name? <laughs> regular person. Regular person. <laughs> <laughs> Should we give ourselves a name? Give yourself any name you think of that is um, appropriate, I guess. Or inappropriate, I don't care. My first thought was this. Shmorg. Shmorg. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going with Shmorg, I guess. Yeah! Capital M, by the way. <laughs> Do you want a capital in there as well? Uh, no, it's, it's, I already said there was a capital. It's capital M. Yeah, do you want me to keep it? Shmalorg. Shmalorg. Yeah, fine. Wait, I gotta put the H in there. I. Yeah, Shmalorg. Let's go. Your pronouns. Two people, they them. My pronouns are they them. Not because I'm bi uh, not binary, but because I'm literally two people. <laughs> I thought you were going to say not because I'm bisexual. As if that <laughs> makes any difference whatsoever. Schmlorg. I'm Stanford Pines. Ford for short. I'd shake your hand, but you look shaken up enough as it is. You seem fine, as far as I can tell. But you, should head, you shouldn't head back out there anytime soon. Where on earth were you driving in such a hurry? I just want to note, I absolutely love this, the like watercolor painting style for this background. It's so nice. Look at what they have to mimic to get a fraction of our power. You and I, Mark, we could rule this earth together. You open your mouth to explain when a voice calls from inside the house. Is that Grunkle this Stan? Is, this is Stan, yes. Poindexter, this better not be one of your experiments again. I've had this place rebuilt too many times to... 
gotta add a little bit of Jersey in there. Poindexter! <laughs> this better not be one of your experiments That's again. a little too much Jersey. <laughs> too much Jersey. Dial it back. Dial back the Jersey! Dial back the Jersey, quick! Before it's too late! <laughs> um, yeah. The owner of the voice walks out of the house and stops slack-jawed at the side of your car. In the side Whoa. of, you're guessing, his What are your house. pronouns? They, them? Because I want to she them titties. Oh my god, no. We just started. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you must have hit your head earlier because you could swear you're seeing double. Sweet Moses, Ford. You've done it this time. What? This had nothing to do with me. I was testing my magnet gun and... It must have pulled this victim... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting confused on which one I'm supposed to be again. Because my voice would try to go for Grunkle Stan there, and I was like, nope, you can't do that right now. <laughs> wow, you're doing a really good impression of me, brother. <laughs> it must have pulled this victim of circumstance into the house. You're not I using enough Jersey, Ford. Fault. Use more Jersey. <laughs> it must have pulled this victim of circumstance into the house. <laughs> I suppose it is entirely my fault. I'm incredibly sorry. You're all right, dial back to Jersey. Uh, we need more Boston. Cry! <laughs> cry! <laughs> That's crazy. Do it. Cry. Just cry. <laughs> A tear streaks down your cheek, and before you know it, you're crying. Both men look intensely uncomfortable. All I can think about is that cat. The cat with the tears welling up in its eyes. Is there a meow, 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 meow? Meow, 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 Anyway. Both... You know what's funny? Wait, hold up, hold up. There was a Billie Eilish concert and people were doing the meow, meow thing to when she was singing. I know, I saw that. That was crazy. Oh, oh my, my god. I don't know how Best Billie Eilish concert face. ever. Both men look intensely uncomfortable, but Ford reaches out to give you a hesitant pat pat on the shoulder. Hey, look, it's fine, alright? Sure, there's a dead node from Shaq's sign from the Shaq signage. I for some reason I thought just fucking like Shaquille O'Neal was standing right came there. And beat the frick out of my Sha car, bro. Shaq is just there. <laughs> He's just like in the way. Crumpled the car is like car. crumpled around him. <laughs> you know. I He's keep just, like, telling you, Shaq, like, hey. don't come back here. <laughs> and a Quit crack in the windshield that looks customers. <laughs> that looks like an ominous triangle, but I'm sure she'll still run. You try to start up the car. It sputters, but ultimately nothing happens. You feel like crying You feel like again. crying again? Oh. Well, uh, I hope you have insurance. Ha! Insurance? Never heard of her! Ah-ha! <laughs> <laughs> On this knee slap. Well, let's call a tow truck for this unfortunate soul here and forget I'll take care of it. You're right. It is cheaper to tow it yourself. Sixer, get that magnet gun out again. No, Stanley, I'm going to fix this. What? Ha! Huh? You? Fix this mess? I've figured out a few alien vehicles in my time. Nah, you kidding me? It'd take some sort of miracle worker to bring this baby back to life, and this miracle worker is on vacation. Stanley, a moment. Ford and Stanley turn away and you're left up to your thoughts. Who could anticipate a car accident like this in the middle of a road trip? You can take care of the car, but how are you going to get home? They run buses out here, right? So you can take a bus out of here and then... Ford clears his throat, shifting a little awkwardly in place. Seems like they've finished their talk. So there are a few options. My brother Stanley here could drive you out of town to find a place to stay for the night. Or, you could stay the night here. We have some maps and information you can look at in the gift shop. And in the morning, we can help you with your car. What do you say? Just as you're about to answer, another high-pitched voice comes from inside the house. Oh, is it, is it Mabel? Yeah. Oh, it's Mabel. Yeah, you gotta be Mabel, bro. Runkle Stan! Picture this! A whole week of... Oh my gosh! 
I can't do a Mabel voice. Oh my Girl, gosh! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta use more Jersey! <laughs> yeah, you go use more Jersey! <laughs> The girl Forget that... about it! <laughs> the girl that runs out of the house comes to a halt at the side of your car. Oh, great. You know what? I'm Uncle probably going to have to cut me out saying saying that in a Jersey accent because YouTube might do that thing where they think I'm saying something else when I'm not. Oh, no. Uh, not so the just bread shenanigans safe. again. Yeah, not the bread shenanigan. I don't want that to happen again. You gotta edit the text in the video to say this is what we're saying. YouTube. I I don't even want I, it, I don't even want to risk it. I don't even want to risk it. I have trauma now. YouTube I have, hates I have bread. Trust apparently. issues. It hates when I say the word bread. French bread. What do you think that is? French. You're probably bread. right. And they got we we were demonetized for French. Well, not demonetized. We got ads limited on our video for saying French, French bread. French bread that starts with a B. Yes, B A G U E T T E. We said that, and then we got ads limited on our video for extreme profanity. So I am I'm gonna try to steer clear from anything that sounds anywhere similar <laughs> for that. So stupid, Grunkle Ford. Why is it that everyone automatically thinks I'm at fault? Because you are. Well, this time it is my fault, but I've invited Schmlork. <laughs> <laughs> but I've invited Schmlork here to stay with us for the night. If they'd like, I'm sure I can fix this. I just have to figure out how. Stanley sighs. Uh, <laughs> where's the money? <laughs> I can take a look. Ah, uh, being on vacation is pretty boring. And the old Stanmobile, almost that Schmorgmobile. <laughs> the old And the old Stanmobile is it, hasn't needed a tune-up yet, so <laughs> it wouldn't be too bad to work on something in the meantime. Anyway, that'll be $3,000. Yeah, I need you to pay my taxes this year. <laughs> Thank you, Stanley. I'm sure I can put something together with the gadgets. Or, excuse me, I'm sure I can put something together from the gadgets I have laying around if you need, if you need any specialized tools to help you with the job. Quick, grab the gun! I just wanna be part of your symphony. You'll get that joke. If bam, you're bam! On TikTok. Can you can you hand me the Glock 19? It's got dolphins on it. <laughs> it's got like the the pink shiny the dolphins. The pink dolphins. And let me introduce myself. I'm Mabel. You can ask me anything. I pretty much know everything there is to know about this place. Schmorg. Oh. Schmorg. <laughs> okay, who's gonna be yeah, Schmorg? I can't. <laughs> I think you should be Schmorg. You're the you're the narrator after all. You're, Wait, you're narrating. Hold Schmorg. on, I haven't <laughs> said anything yet. He's a goblin. <laughs> Schmorg's a goblin. <laughs> it's just a tiny green Schmorg goblin. Schmorg is the same episode where it's just all the gnomes in a hoodie, but instead it's a trench coat. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> no, I guess I'll read it in my normal voice. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait. Wait. Hold, Hold on. on. <laughs> I haven't even said anything yet. I appreciate <laughs> your <laughs> Oh, they're like a they're like a really fucking prissy asshole. Yeah, this sounds so <laughs> proper and it's just What's your name? <laughs> Sobbing in their name. What do you call this? A casket. A coffin. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what voice should I give Smorg? <laughs> I think a prissy voice would be really suitable. Wait, hold on. I haven't even said anything yet. I appreciate your offer to let me stay. But I don't want to sit in your garbage dump for another minute. Now please, fix my Bentley and let me off. And repair your car. Yeah, it'll be good as new in my hands. I mean, look at my Stanmobile. She's been through the winter, the, through the ringer. Who knows how many times she... <laughs> And she's still a B A Ute. You <laughs> can't. What Crunkle Stan voice is giving to you? I can tell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ring it. You know, like I'm, like I'm ringing my hawk. I'm so done with you. He points out a red car parked in the distance away. You can't really see how beautiful it is at this distance, but he sounds fairly confident. For. To well, it is or this suspicious. Turn of events is. I feel like a fancy person would say this. Oh, fortuitous out it's day. Very fortuitous. Mm, yes. <laughs> we'll Pinky go with out. it. We'll go with it. 
free repairs, free lodging? There's no better deal to be found. And if things don't work out, I bought some crack the town for two dollars. probably has some sort of auto repair shop you can head to instead. Well, I accept. Thanks for your help. Well, I do, I, I do believe that I am inclined to accept that offer. <laughs> I do believe, indubitably, that I can accept said offer. Hmm, yes. Hmm. And my apologies again. What an embarrassment. I must have made such an elementary mistake. As the pines lead you inside the house, Maple leaves her number in your phone for you to call whenever, and you find out that Ford's twin goes by Stan. This part's the house, but just outside that door's the mystery shack. Hey, you ever been to the mystery shack before? I wanted to, actually. I saw a bumper sticker while I was on the road and got curious. You know what's funny? Now, now that you're, you're like a, some like like prissy rich person, I can just imagine that you weren't actually driving. It was your butler, and your butler is just <laughs> a fucking pancake on the pavement, just flattened. My because goblin of the butler, and you're no! Just completely ignoring it. I've stolen Smog's identity. Oh well, I'll just buy another one. I'll buy another butler of goblin eventually. You're interrupted <laughs> by a loud triumphant. Ha! Those bumper stickers were a good investment. And Sixer says they're too plain and graphically simplistic and don't even have an address on them, Stanley. How is anyone supposed to find the place to attract customers? Sixer, did you hear that? Well, they are graphically simplistic. I don't know how they found the place, let alone thought what a mystery shack was compelling. I kind of <laughs> liked it. What to say, I've grown fond of it. I find it quite appealing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Twirls empty wine glass. <laughs> See? They kind of liked it. Hey, I like you, Schmlorg. How about I give you a tour sometime tomorrow? Regular price. Okay. Tomorrow? Then I'll have to squeeze in all my get to know you questions in today! Schmlorg, tell me, capybara, yes or no? At that moment, a boy passes in the hallway at the far doorway and, call, and Ford calls out to him. Dipper, my boy. I'm surprised I didn't see you around to the scene of the crime. I, do you I don't be know Dipper? who's going to do Dipper because I can't do it. And I don't think you can either. Crime? What crime? I have it out. I sw Oh, you have someone with you. Good enough for me. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm not suspicious at all. I guess. Did you guys see that car on the side of the shack, though? For a second, I thought the Minotaurs were back with a grudge. Uh, yes. About that, Dipper. Meet Schmalorg. I've... <laughs> such a stupid uh, name. Stranded their car here by accident. It's and possibly foreign. killed their butler. <laughs> it's, um... It's foreign. From, um... Uh... Schmlorgia? Uh, you wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know the place is too expensive for you pleasant. From Sploria. <laughs> you already know the place. It's um between here and Timbuktu. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They're staying here for the time being. Sorry, stranded their car here? You crashed it? No, Dipper. I merely, um, schmorged it. <laughs> I merely schmorged it. <laughs> this schmorg is like a fucking curse word. It's like Smurfs. It's like you say schmorg too much and it just instantly turns into an insult. <laughs> yeah, the S in shack fell on it and everything. And the windows are cracked. One window, the windshield. And schmorg was lucky to make it out alive. That's comforting, Mabel. <laughs> I'm very small. There was Did only a 1% so chance. Uh, there was only a 1% chance to make it alive, but I am the 1% of the richest people in the world, after all. <laughs> it's fine from Schmorgia. I have all. five Schmorg dollars. <laughs> five Schmorglians right here. <laughs> <laughs> How much it's are they a, worth? It's just a coin. Like 32 cents? It's a coin with like a picture of your face on it. It's worth nothing because it's made of chocolate. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Like one of those like doubloons you get from yeah, the Halloween candies? Yeah, the chocolate candies. candies that you get from like the dollar store. <laughs> 
They were fine. No injuries, thankfully. The magnet gun's rather safe, despite never having been tested in a formal setting. Yeesh. Did you not, like, take safety precautions or anything? Actually, the irony of the situation is that I was trying to install a safety precaution. Great job. Hey, hey, if you two are going to do your nerd talk, I'm going to get Schmorgia set up like a Schmorgian. I'm <laughs> very schmorg. I'm going to go schmorg him. <laughs> oh, God. Mabel, sweetie, why don't you so schmorg around? Let them stay in uh, the storage room. That's still empty, right? I'll make it empty. Just bodies. The rest of the day consists of Mabel showing you the storage room you'll be staying in, then the kitchen and the living room and the hallway and the bathroom and pretty much, a, a, pretty much a comprehensive tour of the mundanities of a regular house. The Eventually, mundanities. Oh dear. You find out that the so family mundane. is even more extended than you knew. The decorative dollies make a lot more sense knowing Doilies. the grandmother normally lives here and her grandson Seuss, or was yeah, it Seuss. Seuss. Whatever the name, you look forward. Am to I gonna be all the dudes in this fucking thing? In the I guess I can try hey, to. Don't, be it's Miss <laughs> You just, you do the voices so good though. <laughs> hey, dude, it's me, Seuss. This is my best impression. Hey, dude, it's Miss Seuss. Hey, uh, I heard you almost fucking died in a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you. Uh, what's smaller? this? Uh, what's, yeah, is that's this pretty strawberry cool. jam all over the floor? Is this, is this strawberry jam all over the floor? Mmm, tastes good. That's, um, Seuss, that's, that's their butler. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Goblin blood. <laughs> mm. <laughs> when you go up to the attic, Mabel opens the door to reveal Dipper, nose stuck in a book, but you catch him occasionally glancing up at you as he pretends to read. The next member of the family snorts up at you from Mabel's bed, a rotund pink pig, who Mabel declares is her best friend and partner in crime, Waddles. The two are Waddle. a perfect match. Right down to the chubby cheeks and boopable noses. And in the evening, though you'd still been in disbelief over the state of your car, the family dinner and after dinner TV marathon you'd been invited to made it seem like a normal guest stay rather than a forced circumstance. Returning to the storage room Mabel had shown you earlier, you find an air mattress waiting for you and more pillows and sheets than a summer night warrants. There was is that Bill Cipher in the window right there? Yep, that's Bill. You wake to the weak glare of sunlight God, streaming in through the it. small high window in the wall. You can't remember your room having this kind of feature, or any hotel or motel room for that matter. And then yesterday comes crashing back to you. You glance. Oh no, at that was just suits crashing through the wall. <laughs> hey guys, I fixed it. <laughs> hey guys, I uh, I fixed the car, but I think I broke it again. You glance at the time to see that you've slept into the afternoon. Experiencing the accident yesterday must have left you tired out. Despite having been assured yesterday evening that you were free to anything in the fridge, you still feel like you're imposing on the Pines family, and try preparing as a polite a, and try preparing as polite a guest breakfast as you can. You wash your dishes in the sink before you leave, and just as you're about to exit the kitchen, you bump into Ford. Excuse oh ah. Uh. Your yes. From yesterday, of course. For a good solid moment, Ford regards you in an awkward silence. Dot dot dot. Dot 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 dot. <laughs> Ford clears his throat. <clears throat> I believe Stanley's taking a look at your car outside. If you want to be there for it. You give a nod and make to leave for the for real this time when Ford speaks up again. And Schmore, uh, I'm sorry again for the accident. Name. If I'd been smarter about well, Let's just say it's entirely my fault. And you shouldn't worry about this at all. When it comes down to it, Stanley does have a knack for cars. I predict you'll be back on the road in a matter of weeks. Weeks. You can't keep the dismay off your face and can't really bring yourself to try to, either. What am I going to do with weeks? I can only smog myself so many times. <laughs> I'm smogling upset right now. <laughs> Ford, who'd gone... Kind of uncomfortable and closed off when your face fell, recovers at the prospect of a question he can answer. Well, there's the town of Tatua, of course, and the mystery shack. But if you ask me, all that pales in comparison to... Hold on, do you hear that? 
Ford turns to the kitchen doorway to investigate. Sounds like... The sound comes again, and this time you hear it as well, with the squeal of a pig followed by a pair of quick footsteps running down the stairs. Waddles tumbles past the open kitchen doorway, and Mabel comes into view soon after, a few sheets of paper clutched in hand. Ford steps quickly out of the kitchen, and you follow to the doorway, getting there just in time to see the apparent tug-of-war between Mabel and her pig over a saliva-covered sheet of paper. The paper rips, and after nearly toppling backward from her efforts, Mabel recovers, snatching the scrap of ripped paper from Waddle's jaws, and lifting both pieces up victoriously. Ha <laughs> ha! Mabel wins again! Now I just gotta find Uncle Ford! Ford, who'd run forward and held a hand out to steady the energetic child when she'd been in danger of toppling over, now finds a number of crumpled sheets of paper shoved into his hands. Mabel tugs urgently at his coat. <laughs> Grunkle Ford, you have got to help me! Ford kneels down to face Mabel with a serious, though concerned, look. Slow down, Mabel. What's the matter? Dipper found a stack of pages from your old journals, and I walked in and Waddles ran up and started eating one, and he must have been chewing on it to warn me, Grunkle Ford, because look! Mabel takes the ripped halves of the paper back from Ford's hand and joins them together, holding it up for Ford to see. Hmm, I see. And you took it as a warning. Yes! It says here that it eats small dogs, and Waddles is a small pig, but he sort of kind of looks like a dog from far away, and Waddles must have feared for his life! Waddles seems to second this notion with a snort. Or not, as it seems the pig is lounging adorably with a short distance away in the hallway. You can't imagine what this dangerous predator could be. Some kind of wolf? Something bigger? You're suddenly not so keen on staying anymore. The page Remember is just the... a smorg. <laughs> Remember the pterodactyl I told you about? Waddles was so scared that time. I can't let him leave my side. Pterodactyl? You suppose pigs are allowed in museums around here? Hmm, how about I finish that repellent I never got around to completing? That'll keep Waddles safe from harm. Mabel flops down on the floor in relief. Uncle Ford, you are an actual lifesaver. Waddles, you have nothing to fear. Reek. Ford chuckles, lifting himself out of the kneel and standing back up. All right, I'll go get my recipe. Ford turns to leave, and you suddenly remember that with nothing better to do for the weeks you're going to be here, it wouldn't hurt to get to know Ford. He seems to know what there is to do around town anyway, and you'll need to know you'll need to, you'll need that to not die of boredom in the first week. Or, more pressingly, you could go check on your car and see what stands made out of it so far. You're not exactly eager to face seeing your car in the side of the house again, though. Alright, what do you want to do? Either or, bro. You said either? You want to you wanna, you wanna flip a coin for it? Alright, I'll flip a coin. I'll say heads is Ford. Tails, go and check on the car. After Ford leaves, Mabel rolls away with her pig towards the living room, and you head out of the house in search of Stan. The mystery shack should only have four main sides, but you feel like you've made your rounds past five of them before finally seeing your, your absolute wreck of a car. You swear it looks even worse than it did when you crashed it! That's crazy. Stan stands before it, hands on his hips as he looks at the large wooden S that's made its indent in the car's hood. How bad is it? Terminal. Oh, you mean the car? It's smlorged. <laughs> it's smlorged. Can't tell yet. Not till I get this letter off the hood. That S never did like to stay in place. Anyway, uh, yeah, Mystery forget what I said earlier. Hack. Oh. <laughs> Look, if you're going to insult me... Oh, you're reading the sign. Uh, I'm fixing that later, alright? Just avert your eyes. Don't look at it. My voice is starting to fucking hurt. <laughs> Let me get some water. I think we should offer to help him. I guess we should fix it as soon as possible, then. Sounds good to me. Give me a hand here, would ya? Look Stan at that sweet, sweet schmore. <laughs> oh my god. Stan directs you to help him push the wooden S off the car. It stalls a little in its own dent, but with another firm shove, its end meets the ground. 
Stan gives it another push with a grunt and it tips, falling completely to the ground with a wump. Now that it's free of its burden, Stan lifts up the dented hood of the car to take a look inside. He hums and haws and rubs a hand over his chin in thought, walking over to his toolbox and grabbing a tool before walking back, still assessing the damage. Yeah, this one's gonna take a while. You've got parts that need replacing, not to mention she's not gonna look so hot after this. Not unless Ford's got the text squirreled away somewhere that can smooth out these dents. He tells you more of the situation, the more this all sinks in. You really are stuck here. Stan spots your worried <clears throat> frown. Hey, Schmorg, right? Yes, that's correct. Go Schmorg yourself. <laughs> Look, I know how this sounds, but with me on the job, you'll be sent back on that road in no time. And by no time, I mean 37 years. You think so? Kid, I know so. I've even got a plan to get those replacement parts of yours. Might not be able to clean up all the scuff marks after I'm done, but she'll run. Unlike you. I'm actually clearly. 427, to be exact. I'm a mystery of the world's imagination. That's why I'm called Smlog. I'm from another dimension of Smlogia, between here and Timbuktu. I'm from Smlogia. <laughs> mm, yes, from Shmlogia. Here's one Smlog dollar. <laughs> Would you like a Schmoglian? It's worth 35 <laughs> cents in your culture. He just it's made of. Chocolate. Oh, cool! A, a chocolate coin! Um, um, um. That like, was like 400 God. in my currency! <laughs> <laughs> that was my entire life savings! <laughs> that was one fourth of my entire estate! <laughs> He's got like a mansion. <laughs> and hey. So maybe you've got to stay a couple days. So what? There are worse places to get stranded, believe me. Like, in a Waffle House. <laughs> in fact, I'd even say that Mystery Shack is the best place to get stranded. We've got all tons of stuff. We got, we've got, we got all tons of stuff for people just passing through. Merchandise, magic, mystery, uh, any other M words, mayhem. You get the idea. Stan tosses the tool in his hand back in the toolbox, exchanging it for another. He works for a while longer in silence, metallic clinks and the occasional heavy breath all that mixes in with the sounds of the outdoors. You stand by, awkward, uncomfortable, and a little useless. Can I help you with anything? Know anything about cars? Uh... Cause some up! No. I don't think I do. That is my butler's what is job. This car? <laughs> what is this? What is this car you speak car of? Car you speak of? This was a smog oh, device. My, <laughs> you mean my my smogmobile? My smogmobile. Okay. Stan straightens, cracks his back, and sets down a tool before leaning casually against the nearest load-bearing surface. He wipes his forehead, lets his hand fall to his waist, and gives you an assessing look. Ass-essing. Hmm, how about collages? Tall tales? Improv? Yes, I think I can handle that. But what does that have to do with this? You gesture at Whoa, the Whoa, put your smorg away! <laughs> you gesture at your stranded car, held in limbo between life and death by nothing other than Stan Pines' car, expertise and a little luck. Nothing. I was planning on having you help me suit- help- help me help- I was God damn it! Fuck! I was planning <laughs> on having you. Smorgulin running out of ideas here. I was planning on having you help me help Zeus around the shack, a favor for a favor. What do you say? Well, it's more interesting than helping Ford with his pest problem. You was a pest problem? All right, follow me. Yeah, remember the monster Mabel was talking about? Yeah, I didn't know it was a pest problem. We, I just knew that that was, it was a thing. A pest. Oh my bad. You follow Stan back into the mystery shack, passing by the showroom and getting a glimpse of an energetic figure leading a flock of tourists through a <clears throat> vert vertible? Veritable. veritable sea of obviously fabricated oddities. You hear the words, And this is the and ninth- this is the ninth one of the world- My bad. Oh, it's Zeus. And this is the ninth one of the world. Right here in the mystery shack, it's what makes the place the world famous, dudes. Stan notices your pace slowing as you listen and tosses an explanation back for you. That's Zeus. During operating hours, he's the Mystery Shack's one and only Mr. Mystery. 
I told him he didn't have to keep the shack running while he's on vacation, but the kid's got a passion for the role. My fucking computer just turned off. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Load bearing. I'm bearing a load right now in these... N uh, you interested in this kind of stuff? I was thinking about going on a tour. It feels weird now that you're staying at a tourist trap, though. And you were kind of going to poke fun at the exhibits. Harder to do when you have to live around who your tour guide. It's fine, really. Nah, I want to give you a tour of the place. You get one from the founder himself. You ever hear one of my plugs on the radio? Uh. Eh. <laughs> You weren't really paying attention to the radio during the drive, just taking in the Oregon scenery. See the signs pointing to this place for over a mile down the road? Um... Again, you were pretty preoccupied with the Oregon scenery, but you guess you did see some signs with question marks on them, on some vague advertising. Just seeing what works. Bumper stickers, huh? Ha! Still got one on Ford. Anyway, follow me, folks. Well, folk. Get ready to be amazed. Stan starts leading you back down the way you came. You trail behind him, a little skeptical, but definitely curious. Didn't you say the founder would lead this tour? Is Seuss the founder? Stan laughs. Ha! Ha! That's funny! <laughs> ha! What? Ha! No! <laughs> I can't. I'm the founder. Built this place from the ground up. Well, metaphorically speaking, I mean the house was here. And the junk was here, but I was the one who spun this place into a wondrous house of mysterious junk. Stan gestures with his arms like he's smoothing out a rainbow. You're not very impressed. Prepare to be amazed. You're still not very impressed, but his ener energy gets you hoping you'll be amazed anyway. There's a tour group in the showroom right now, so I'll be taking you a different cycle that completely misses him. We're starting in the gift shop. And the reason why we're doing that is because the artist of this game didn't want to draw extra models of the people there. Buy money! Buy money! Buy money! Get money! Buy with money! Buy my toys! This is a marketing strategy by everybody. You enter the gift shop, a simple room crowded top to bottom with the standard tourist souvenirs and merchandise. You see t-shirts with question marks, mugs with question marks, and pretty much everything has question marks. In one corner of the room stands a lumpy attempt of a statue labeled The Founder, recognizable as Stan only by the nose and glasses. The room usually comes after I butter the customers up to buying things, but since you're staying a while, I've, I'll have plenty of time to sell you stuff later. <laughs> At least he's confident. Take a look around. If you see an impulse buy, make it. Nothing like trusting your instincts. By the founder statue? <laughs> oh no, we're just looking. My bad. Founder statue, jar of eyeballs, t shirt, pine tree hat, Aztec calendar, freezer full of iced goods, pyramid of mugs, or employee <clears throat> of every month. What do you want to look at? Um, I guess we'll just go in order. Founder statue. Yeah, should have asked Mabel to carve it. You gotta admit that every version of me has got a charming smile, though. It's a good employee of every month. Seuss has always been the hardest worker in the place. It was only natural to hand it over to him. That's all I had to say about that. Thought we sold this thing years ago. Ha! Huh, nah, I forgot to put a price on it. Just has a dollar sign on it. Stan takes a dark marker and squeezes in a $9.99. Then he goes back and makes it $29.99. <laughs> That's crazy. That jar's got a lot of eyeballs. T-shirt? Who doesn't love a good souvenir t-shirt? They're always- they're great for layering. Like me, cause I'm an ogre. And I like onions. And they've got the characteristic mystery shack question mark on them. What makes a mystery shack question mark instead of just a regular question mark? That's a great question. You ask too many questions. Or do you? He says that last part in an exaggerated tone that betrays it as a sales pitch. This guy has no subtlety. Dipper used to wear one of those. Seuss tells me they're sold hot like fa like, like fat cakes. Seuss tells me they sold hot like... God damn it. Seuss tells me they sold like hot cakes after Ford tossed his journals in the bottomless pit. Funnily, or funny, those events had no correlation. Journals? Bottomless pit? We'll have a chance to swing by the bottomless pit later. It's a prime spot on every tour because 
The troublemakers always accidentally trip in, and I get to lead the tour without them for 20 minutes. I'm kidding! Should have seen the look on your face. You freaking schmlork. <laughs> you schmlorkin' idiot. I absolutely know how to read that thing, and you should buy it. Just because you're staying over does not mean you get to sneak over here for a popsicle. Oh man. I want a schmlorkin' popsicle, bro! I get to do that, but that's because this used to be my place, and I get founder benefits. You, you only get schmlorger benefits. <laughs> you, that cost 10 schmorglians. I also get founder dibs on the pineapple ice pops. You can't actually take one out of the stack. I glued them together way back when. Secret business trick. And you're telling me because... Because why the schlorg not? No one ever believe you. No one will ever schmorglin believe you. Then they'll try it, and the whole stack will fall to the floor. You notice the you break it, you buy it sign on the wall. I think we went through everything. Yep. You sure? Well, I think I hear the tour group heading out of the showroom anyway. Now, most tourists don't appreciate mine, I mean, nature's artistic genius, but what, by which I mean my artistic genius, because I remembered you're gonna help me out today. You don't think up a money-making wonder like the, the Sasquatch by having a boring nine-to-five office job. You think it up when you, you, God damn it, motherfucker, dyslexia! <laughs> you think it up when you wonder, why hasn't anyone found the Sasquatch? Could it be that its name has been mispronounced this whole time? Or is it because you're a frickin' schmlorg and no one likes you? Damn. Anyway, just let me know when you've soaked up enough inspiration from this room, because you're gonna need to use it right after. My name is enough to be creative. Schmlorg, I like that! Meet the schmlorg! And it's just like- Schmlorg, alright, come here, I'll put a shotgun fucking casing in your fucking head and we'll Whoa! Sell you. It's just a goblin, like, just duct taped to the wall. <laughs> You're like hanging from the ceiling. Hey guys. Yeah, that's Steve. He's a schmlorg. All right, come on. You're gonna see what it makes this place a mystery shack instead of just the shack. We're making another attraction for the showroom. You wanna know why it's not called the shack? Because shack's right there. Hello, everybody. You follow Stan through the living room to the kitchen, where stuffing and animal parts are strewn across the surface to your left. Stan pulls out a thick needle and a spool of thread, and as an afterthought, adds a couple nails and a hammer to the pile. It seems a little unsanitary to do this right across from the fridge. It has the potential to look almost gruesome if it weren't so oddly cartoonish. He steps up to the workspace and pulls out the googly eyes that have been glued all over the lifeless, glassy ones of a typical tra taxidermy. Mabel's contributions to the craft project remain firmly intact. Huh. That's what I get for letting Mabel bring her stash of scrapbooking supplies. That's one more thing to add to the backstory. Backstory? What? You don't really think tourists are dumb enough to believe the thing that you're selling uh, is just what you tell them it is, just like that, do you? Because if you do, you'll be sent to do business in Gravity Falls. Anywhere else, though, customers take a little more work. See, every good piece comes with a kind of story. Or if you're a Poindexter, some kind of lore. Horror stories are work pretty well because, with enough suggestions, People can always find ways to spook themselves. Done it for years. It's kind of an art. Stan appears nonchalant, but you see a quiet pride within him. Sounds easy. Sounds easy. Stan merely looks amused. Oh yeah? Let's see you take a shot at it after we put this thing together. You've said you've done this for years. Oh, is that a knack for it? Even when I was a kid. Sure, there was a little learning curve involved. And I've had a few unhappy customers over the years. Stan pauses seemingly to reminisce, and the mixed smile grimace on his face tells you he probably had many, many unhappy customers. But mostly I've run and get a great business telling lies. I mean, stories. You're learning from a true master, kid. Why don't you run this place anymore? Stan's grin melts into something softer, maybe a little bittersweet. My brother wanted to drag me off a trip with him. I couldn't say no. And I couldn't just close the place, so I left it to all the suits. He practically grew up in this place, you know? Definitely wouldn't have trusted it to Wendy. She's usually the cashier around here in the summer. It's weird having to explain all this to a you. 
I keep thinking. You already know all this. You work like you're still part of this place. You can take a man out of the mystery shack, but you can never take the mystery shack out of a man. Specifically me. Which is why I'm back to work, even though I don't have to. 30 years of the same routine will do that to you. Also, the special knickknack I got from the store that I got shoved up my ass. <laughs> oh, okay. What was your original vision for the shack? Vision? Make money! What other vision do you need? Fair enough. But over the years, sure, I've used the mystery line for advertising. Who isn't curious? Who doesn't want to be amazed? Liberals. That's who. Kids are the most skeptical of the bunch, though. Let me tell you. Once they hit about eight or nine, they love trying to prove it's all fake. Then they get older and realize there's nothing good left in the world unless you pretend there is. And everyone pretends along with you because they're all desperate like me. I don't want to think about that. Stan turns his attention back to the workspace, and you notice once more the daunting selection of items that lay upon the table. It's not the number, but the variety that makes you unsure of how you're going to craft something out of this. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to do with this stuff. Surprise me! Stan walks off to the side to, you guess, do some work of his own. You're glad he's not going to watch you the whole way, though. How are you going to approach this? Piece together as many matching parts as you can find. Piece together as many des... Di dice... Despi des... Dice... Disparate. Different parts. Know. Keep things Dispare a nice rate. mix of mass and mi <laughs> matched and Disparate. mismatched. I don't fucking know. I'm, I'm more of this person. Not matching. Okay, then do both. Now, how should you keep the parts attached? This one. I am a sewing okay, person. Yes. Okay, you have a base to work off of. What's next? I'll let That's you pick this one. The details. All right. Hey, Stan, I'm finished. Not with me, you're not. Uh, I mean, hey, not bad, Schmlorg. Not bad at all. Stan lifts your anomalous amalgam of aloft triumphantly. That was a mouthful for that me. That is a sentence. So what's the story here? Give it to me. Uh, how do you want to approach this? More fact than fiction, more fiction than fact, or just have fun with it? Just have fun with it. Just have fun with it. This is a fiskworken, a fish squirrel chicken. Stan nods appraisingly. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you got the hang of this. All right, this thing's about as close to show ready as, it get, as it'll get. Wait here a sec. Stan carries the showpiece out of the room. After a few moments, you hear his footsteps return and he comes into the room with two cans of pit cola. Stan sets one down on the dining table, its condensation starting a slow drip onto the table's surface. He waves you over to join him, and you slide into the seat across from him. Nothing like a cold when to finish up the day. Cheers. He picks up his can, gesturing towards you with it as he leans leisurely back in his chair, and you watch as he takes a sip. It's a nice looking sip, and now you're staring. You pull over your own can and pop it open. So, got any questions for me? Like how big my schmorg is. So right, right after your, you got any questions for me? My question is, will we see you all next time in the next video? Yeah, you guys better schmorg and come back. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Swooning Over Stands. Please let us know in the comments below if you want to see more of this interesting dating game. <laughs> And don't forget to buy my good friends at BSNB's merch down at merch. Buy our merch! In the merch section of the YouTube channel. Buy our merch! <laughs> at youtube.com slash merch. I'm being subtle about it! Buy our merch! Slash BSNB. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. <laughs> Do you enjoy us reading visual novels or stories? Well, I gotta say, there's a whole lot more waiting for you in our members only podcast, Fan Fiction Friday where we drop videos and audio of us reading some of the most cringe fanfiction we can find. Just hit the join button or the subscribe plus button down below to find out more info. And thank you to all of our YouTube members. They make this possible. If you want to join and get your name shown here, hit the join button or the link in the description. And thank you to our gold tier member, The Pinky Life. If you want to be shouted out too, select the gold peeps tier in our membership tiers. Bye! Bye bye!